All right, what is up, everybody? Welcome back here to Four Fly Guys, uh, the official podcast of Mayor Media. We're back. Uh, we have a very special guest uh, here in the middle of this episode. We got a lot of good flyers talk uh, on this one. Uh, Scotty Hartnell joined the pod. Uh, that was a, a lot of fun. You guys will hear that uh, here in a little bit. Uh, we got a little bit of a flyers talk here as well. Uh, the boys are rolling. Five game win streak. Uh, we're pumped. Um, I'll start with Paul, and then we'll check in with the boys. Uh, what's up, Paulie? Any uh, any thoughts here on the uh, recent stretch? Yeah, they're buzzing. I mean, yeah, it's pretty simple buzzing. that they are buzzing. It's pretty much the most uh, entertaining, I guess, probably the best on ice product they've had. I'd say at this point, it's probably even past nineteen twenty. Uh, yeah. Probably in at least over a decade since the uh, the Cup final run. So, um, yeah. What about you, Sam? They we're just winning games, and I'm shoveling snow. And that's pretty much all that's going on. Yeah, spending a, all right. a ton of money on hockey cards. Yeah. No, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, it's up, dude. Yeah, man. These these last few games have really just been fueling my Arison propaganda. Um, propaganda <laughs> and my dude, propaganda. But keep going, dudes. Dude's been a stud. Team team playing in front of him has been a stud. Mm-hmm. Yeah, easily Dallas game. So fun. Yeah, amazing game. Um, before we get into anything, can we please talk about Owen Tippett for a minute and the goal? I I, I need to understand. Which I need one? To, there's two. The, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. The backhand, the spin around <laughs> up the ice. He's flying. He'd, oh my god, the 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 pirouette. Like it's just disgusting. And goes top cheese. Um, I mean, I, I I literally jumped out of my seat when he scored that. That that's that's probably the the sickest goal that I've seen in a Flyers uniform. Yeah. The, the one that comes close is, is the, the Sealer one. The Sealer one. That's Columbus one. Is that what no, you're the, about? the backhand and then the goal against Tampa where he lifted McDonough's oh, stick. Yeah, yeah. Mm. That was gross, too. Oh, that was disgusting. But I, dude, recent there's memory, though, it has to be. It has to be Tippett and Sealer, though, in recent memory. Yeah, yeah 100%. I think there's the one from Patrick against Montreal um, mm-hmm. where he dangled through. That actually was scored today as we're recording this. Uh, that was five years ago today. Oh, uh, Nolan Patrick? Patrick, yeah, when he dangled yeah, remember, through. Uh, on remember the his goal against against Minnesota when he went between the legs? Yeah, yeah, off the board. Yeah, I mean, like, there's been a ton of good ones, um, but that one, that that's up there. Uh, like frost between the legs. I mean, he, like the pass, the, the Walker goal was even disgusting too. Um, mm-hmm. And I think that just shows you how confident the Flyers are and how good they've been playing. Um, you know, well, obviously, we'll, we'll kind of send it around here in a minute. But the past couple of games, last five, uh, 3-2 win against the Canadians in a shootout, a 4-3 win uh, against Minnesota, a 2 nothing win against Winnipeg, which I think everyone in the world had the Flyers losing that game, uh, a 4-2 win in St. Louis, and then they absolutely dominate the Stars last night, uh, two days ago as we're recording this here. It was a... Like, you know, and, and, and look, I, I'm, I, I don't want to go into, like, each little game because some of them are, are so long, right? But like, I think that the whole thing in this stretch, you know, you've you've had a lot of good moments from scoring goals. Uh, you got in power play goals, I believe, in five of the last six games, or it might be six of the last seven on top of my head. Um, you know, Cam Atkinson finally breaks his streak. Morgan Frost has seven points in his last seven games. Um, you know, specific guys. I mean, everyone's chipping in. Scott Lawton on a penalty shot. Walker scores. Um, Trying to think who else scored in these past couple of games. I mean, you you get some power play goals from Couturier. Like, I mean, it, everyone's chipping in. Obviously, Tippett, like we mentioned, um, and obviously Jamie Drysdale. I mean, he makes his debut. The Flyers are still undefeated in the Jamie Drysdale era. Uh, he's only played three games as a Flyer. He was hurt. Five and zero. Yeah. Wait, what? Five and zero. Yeah, yeah. He hasn't played every game, but they're five and zero yeah. in the in the Drysdale in the era. era. Yeah, no, you, you, you like cut out my headphones. I couldn't hear what you said. Um, yeah, no, I mean, I think I think the past uh, the past like five games, it's just been really refreshing. I mean, I was a little worried, I think, with with making a trade like midseason, how that might affect the room because they were playing well up until that point. They were in a little bit of a skid, but yeah, it, it's it's affected it fine. And um, you know, I'm 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 super I wouldn't really say that kind of where they're they it, it can't really it can't really affect the room if the no guy one's in the room. Yeah. yeah, he was he was never in the room, so it can't really. Yeah, no, 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 no. I just it means like that. introducing a new guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No. No, I I just didn't know how much it would change it, and also I think too because a lot of it of it now has been eleven seven, so like the lineup and all that. And I just didn't. I mean, not, not that I thought it was going to be a negative thing. I was just curious how it was going to work out. Yeah, um, yeah. 
And it, but no, I mean, hundred percent. I mean, you guys are right. Like it's, it's been, it's been, I mean, it, it, like I can't tell you the last time I was excited to watch a Flyers game. Like every night I'm like, all right, like, let's go. Flyers are on. Like, you know what I mean? And I, I haven't like, it's been like, Oh, the Flyers are on, you know what I mean? Like the past couple of years. And like, now I'm just like, it, it, it's really, it's really fun. It just, it's such a good vibe when the Flyers are good. Yeah. I mean, I, I said for a couple of years, I'm like, if I wasn't a Flyers fan, I wouldn't watch Flyers hockey because it was so boring. And it was like, you right. know, just, mm-hmm. like, like, you know, you can watch you, even if I'm not a Tampa or Avs fan, I'll turn on the game and watch it. Cause it's good hockey. But mm-hmm. It wasn't like that here for a while, but now it, it finally is. So yeah. I'm happy about that. And then if, if, you know, if we do somehow like, you know, if the, the wheels come out or something like that and we do start losing games, if we can continue to be fun, I'm, I'm all for that because I mean we can do whatever we we can do anything this year. If we if we start losing again and we like fall down the standings, it's like, well, you know, it's a rebuild. That's, yeah, it, it, that, that that's the thing. Like it sucks, yeah. but it's a and rebuild. If you win, yeah. obviously, you know that's yeah, yeah that's the goal. So right, yeah. yeah. And watching these games now, you have a chance of seeing a potential goal of the year from Owen Tippett. I mean, like last two games been absolute monster goals, like insane. Like can't remember especially seeing something like that consistency consistently and like seeing those consistently high, exciting plays is just not something I can remember in recent years for this team since, yeah. since Giroux left really. Does it actually have a shot at goal of the year? Really? Well, like it, does it actually have a shot at goal of the year? Oh really? no. I mean, pro- I probably like, not because it's really top, top, but yeah, it's, yeah, it's gotta be top 10. It's his oh, yeah. top 10. Um, it's, it's easily the Flyers goal of the year. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, it's I mean, there could close. be some, there could be another one. Uh, I saw Matt like Brown. people said Matt Brown in the ECHL. Yeah, yeah. It I mean, I mean dude, Matt Brown. Yeah. Ew. Fire, fire, <laughs> dude, was... camp legend. Yeah, everybody was that saying dude, like, that dude lit it up in the preseason too. Better. He was fun. Yeah, he scored in the rookie game too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. The Stutzla goal. Um, they said yeah. that one was better, even though the goalie dodged the puck on it. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, they said the McDavid one against Nashville. Well, um, I mean. That one was sick yeah, too. Devils been yeah, saying we're saying kind of lucky though because it like it went through like four skates. But it, it but it up. looked so cool. It looked sick, yeah. yeah. But like the tippet one was just pure skill. And then the other one I saw yeah. was Luke Hughes going end to end, like whatever. Fuck Luke Hughes. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think there are some good ones. Um, I can't really think of any like off the top of my head from this year. Uh. I don't know. I mean, like, I, like there isn't any one that like really like stands out to me like that. Um, but I definitely do. I agree with Paul. I think the past couple of years, the Sealer one and and uh, the Connecty one against Columbus last year, where he scored mm-hmm. on the, the backhand one. Yep. That went high gloves. And then backhand, yeah. 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 Um, you know, and and then even Frost, the, the pass that he had on on the Walker goal, that was nice. Um, it was a good not, finish. Not familiar Walker. with Walker, huh? Not familiar with the player. <laughs> and then, uh, you know the the, the um, I mean, and, and I think that's the other thing too is like so many guys are chipping in. Um, obviously the PK has been good. PK actually went up the first. Uh, it just dropped back down the second, so that's it's right up there at top in the league. And the power play's been better, which has been good. Um, you know, I, let, let's kind of start there a little bit. I guess with the power play, kind of go off topic a little bit. The power play, I think the one thing that I've noticed, and I don't know if you guys agree with this, with Drysdale, they've kind of gone with the. Drysdale and Zabula kind of set up. Uh, yep. Sanon's been on it with with Z uh, or Drysdale, whoever. Um, it seems like the first unit right now, the the first unit, quote unquote, using air quotes, um, video obviously uh, that's a little different, but you know the 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 main quarterback right now is probably Zamula. Uh, they've used him really well. He's been good at it. Um, it is a little like. Like to me, like when I watch it, I'm like, ugh, like, and it's not that I get bummed that it's more. It's just like I want to see Drysdale because I'm not over the excitement right. of the trade. So like, yeah. I'm just like, oh. And then like, you know, Drysdale gets out there with like 15, 20 seconds left, and I'm like, oh my god. Um, exactly. <clears throat> that happened at least three times last night where he did yeah. five power plays, and his usage. You you would think, especially for a guy who was you know supposed to come in as the main quarterback, you would think his usage would be a little bit higher on the power play. But they, for whatever reason, they really like Samula there in that spot. And uh, like to his credit, he's been really good there. It's just I think, uh, yeah. especially in his first his first kind of you know couple games with the team, I think you'd want to get a little bit more time for Drysdale. But um, 
you know, he's, yeah, he's impressive he in so many other ways. That would be part of it. That's that too. I mean, yeah. he's, he's impressive though in so many other areas. So it's kind of just like, right. Let him do his thing, I guess. Have, have there have there been any thoughts on on him so far in his first couple of games? On Drysdale, Drysdale's been yeah. outstanding. Yeah, he, he's been one of the most fun players to watch when he's yeah. on the ice. His skating's unbelievable. His skating's um, beautiful. Laterally, it's it's insane. I'm, I he's have not the best skater on the team, time. and it's not close. Yeah. How, how yeah. much ice he? I'm I'll, I don't know about that. I I, I think Konechny's a pretty good skater. He, um, I think he's the smoothest skater. He's the most effective with this. Yeah, skating. yeah. So he I, might I, be a little I, bit faster, but yeah. Drysdale is just the one thing that I noticed the most is he's small, but how many how many pucks he wins? Like he mm-hmm. doesn't. And I, I that's what's so interesting to me about it is like I was thinking that maybe this is going to be like a little bit of like a Hampus Lindholm type thing because like the one thing that everyone talked about around the NHL and, and you heard it so many times when, when Lindholm got traded to the Bruins was you didn't really know how good he was because he always played in the West because you know we are East Coast the games are later all that stuff so when you go for you know when a lot of guys go West East or East to West you know the, there's that that change where like people will look at them and be like like oh my god like this guy's like he's a better player or better than i thought i guess and that's kind of how i thought with drysdale like i knew he was good but i didn't know he was like that good you know what i mean and, and like now that i i watch him i'm like the this, so, again i don't, I don't want to go all the way back to the canadians game but that was his debut and we obviously didn't do a pod you know since um but i mean like some of the passes he made that night the the, the absolute dart he threw to frost in overtime like right on the tape. Um, I mean, just some really good passes and, and first movement with the puck and exiting out of the zone. Um, and obviously, same like you said, the 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 uh, lateral movement, how much he can create. He, he just opens up the ice is the biggest thing. I mean, like the Atkinson goal last game, that's because of Drysdale. I mean, yes, Sanheim gets the shot on that and, and all that too, and they get the, you know the lucky bounce off Frostick and then off Atkinson, but. That's all drives though, because he moves into the ice. He, you know, creates the the open space for Sandheim to shoot, and you know, it ends up going in. So, you know, I, I, I've been I've been really impressed so far. I think he's been been really good. Yeah, I think it makes sense that he would look better here than he did in Anaheim, because like in Anaheim, he had the man on man strategy, and like that's not best equipped for his skill set. You know, like he's he's not the biggest guy. Yeah, he does have the skating skills, but like. He's a more offensive guy. Like putting him like with that heavy responsibility, responsibility of man on man, like that just is not better for him. So him playing the zone here, like will probably take a lot of that pressure off. And it's probably why he's already looked better here than he did in Anaheim, even without being used to this system, just because it's a lot of pressure taken off of him. Um, yeah, I think he's looking yeah, fantastic. yeah, no, hundred percent, and. I think one of the uh, the things, especially about Drysdale, that I've noticed is he he has a really good connection with Frost. You know, like you said, with the Montreal game, the dime in overtime, he actually did assist on the power play goal that Frost had. Yep. Um, we've seen it in the games. We've seen it in in Voorhees just at practice. Them kind of just you know talking. They obviously have the connection. Being uh, I, they're from the same area, I believe, so they've you know kind of interacted before. But uh, Frost is one of those guys actually just you know kind of transitioning to him he's one of those guys that's heating up right now big time three game point streak i think you said he's got seven in his last seven like you said um yeah seven points just, last seven games he just looks really good you know eight points in the last nine um chris obviously i'll let you have your spotlight here go ahead tell us about frost that's it. i mean yeah i mean look i i mean like i i don't really know what what about what you know much else i could say um I've beat the drum so many times. Uh, you know, he's he's a good player. You put him with good players, he's going to put up points. I mean, all, I mean, I guess all he had to do was was go into towards his office and bark at him a little bit, and that kind of woke him up. But I mean, the, the, the I, I've said this for years. the The skills always been there. the The skill set, the the vision, the plays that he makes. Um, you know, I, I don't. I think the one thing that I have noticed. With specifically with Frost, and then this kind of ties in with the team a little bit too. Is a he's won more draws, and he's also won a ton more battles and kept plays alive in winning one on one battles, um, which is the one thing I've always kind of had an, an, an not, not a knock, but one thing a little bit of a pet peeve, I guess, with him was that I was just like, I thought there were times where there were battles he probably could win more. But the one thing I will say is the team has won or been haven't lost in the face-off percentage in the past couple of games. They were 25th in the NHL going into the Montreal game. They're now 22nd in the league. And that's not a huge jump, but over a five-game span, you go three spots. That's a lot. Um, 
I had the tweet up about it earlier, and I'm, I'm going to pull that up now. I'm slacking here. I don't have my notes uh, officially done. Um, but I, I do think the one thing that I think, you know, obviously comes from the faceoffs is, you know, what can you do with the puck when you win it, right? And it's one thing to win draws, but it's another when you can, you know, actually score with it. And the Flyers have done that in many ways. Tippett's goal last night was off a faceoff win uh, against the Stars. Like, there's been so many little things that I think play into it. Uh, they had 54% against the Canadians, 52 against Minnesota, 53 against the Jets, 60 against St. Louis, and then 50% last night against the Stars. And the Stars, I believe, were a third in the NHL in faceoffs uh, going into it or something like that. Um, so they, you know, they're obviously one of the better teams. Some of the other teams around like middle of the pack as well, but still, I mean, you still ended up doing good in that area. I just think everything's coming together for this team. And the only thing that scares me with this is the fact that you don't play for like nine days coming up. That, that, that'll be the biggest test is if they can come out of the all-star break and just like look fine, then they're hundred percent a playoff team. But if they come out and they shit the bed in, in February and because of the all-star break where you're off for so long, then, you know, that would, that would really stink, but it would be kind of what it is at that point. The Flyers momentum always gets halted by a break that they always. can't control. Yeah. Always. <laughs> this COVID, whatever the hell. Yeah. Yeah. No, but uh, Frost, like, yeah, his game has been outstanding. I feel like it really, like we've seen the outstanding puck control. Um, like from these guys recently, we saw obviously Frost was outstanding. I got obviously against Dallas, it was end of the first period, only one shot. His first, what was it, 35 minutes? They were only held to one shot. Like, like you said, with winning those face offs, like with our good puck control abilities, it, it's just unbelievable. We can just hold them to anything. Um, yeah, Frost has been outstanding. And then also for me, Joel Farabee. Um, I yeah. feel like he's always like Philly kind Joel. of quietly fantastic like he's not he's not doing like shit like we we're seeing Tippett doing we're like you can't not notice Tippett in games like these but every game for us is just unbelievable um 35 points in his 45 games he's plus 12 um he's right up there in 5v5 uh goal scoring leaders um he's got 20 points in his last 20 games the four point streak he, he's having a career year I'm honestly wondering if right now if he's third best forward on the team right i mean connect me and i mean tip it right now looks outstanding but i would maybe only put couturier above faraby and even that i'm kind of he's going... he's the top four yeah yeah, uh, yeah he, he's been outstanding if, if he yeah. keeps playing like this he can be a future first liner for us maybe not like he, he'd probably be like the third guy you know, next to like a mm -hmm. Mitchkov and like someone else, mm -hmm. but like he's been outstanding. What, what was that? A Goche. A Goche. Yeah. Who's that? Who's, Who's that, that guy? Yeah. Um, yeah. No, Farabee's been really good. And I, I think yeah. the one thing that I notice a lot with Joel is that like, and this kind of goes to what you were saying, well, like he's got instant chemistry with anyone this year. You put him with Konecki, he shines. You put him with Couturier, he shines. Really, you can put anyone with Couturier and they play well, but, um, you know, if it's if it's Frost, if it's Tippett, if it's Paling, oh my God! I mean, he, Brink, he, he, Brink was like yeah, even Brink he had as much as Bedard was when they were playing yeah. together. Yeah, no, hundred percent. And and that that's that's what I like the most about this lineup is essentially they always have an answer, and you can put anyone with anyone right now, and it's and it's working. I mean, unfortunately, with the eleven and seven, some guys are going to get sad, like Brink and you know Deloria. He's been out a little bit. I never thought that would happen, to be honest. Um, and then Mark Stoll was obviously out last game, Why? too. So, what, Deloria getting scratched? Because I just never thought Deloria would get scratched. Jeez, yeah, you always say, don't you think those guys never come off the ice or something like that? They're, they're, yeah, way, well, they're, 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 way out, they're out there way more than they should be or something like that. Well, I just – I thought at times there was like – it felt like every other shift the fourth line was out there and their minutes were up. Um, And then as we were kind of going along, it, it dipped and then Deloria did get scratched. So, Dude hates the energy, guys. Why don't you list off the uh, other players? Because Delorier is not an energy guy. It. They put Delorier in the lineup to take to, to fight Pat Maroon against the Wild. Is that not energizing? The same thing that Garnet Hathaway could do. What was the point of doing that? Hathaway well, doesn't you don't like Hathaway uh, either. Do you? I like Hathaway. You feel like, I feel like, like every time that. Well, I feel like that entire line. You're always like, why the hell are these guys out here? It's not. No, it's not that I say that. It's not that I don't like them. It's not that. <laughs> 
not that I don't like them. It's just the fact that like they're it's it's they're out there every other shift. Is my point. Not that they play. I, I know. They I, don't have, know. I don't know that I agree with that. I feel like their usage has been down anymore. recently. It's, it's an old argument yeah. that, that hasn't been happening. That's why I haven't said it. Right. That's what I mean. I, I think that th- I think the thing with Farabee especially is like the biggest stat I guess here that jumps out to me is more like just his pace of production right now. Like he's on pace for yeah. sixty four points. And, you know, when G left, he said that, uh, you know, he thought if there was anybody here that was going to break his records, he thought it would be Joel Faraby. And at the time, I didn't really, like, understand what he was seeing. Like, I, I always thought that Faraby was a, a solid player. I just didn't think that he was anything, like, you know, really special. But right now he's showing that he he can be that guy. And, you know, he's on pace for 64 points. I think his previous career high was last year, 39, in what was basically the worst season of his career because he was hurt. Uh, or coming back from you know the big surgery, but um, he's he's really just putting it together this season, and the consistency is what's the most impressive. I mean, twenty points in twenty games is like pretty ridiculous numbers. So um, I, I think if he can keep it up for the rest of the year, he he could uh, that contract right now could age well, pretty you good. Well, probably know this off the top of your head. It's it's a, it's like a sixty something point pace. Yeah, sixty four. Yeah, sixty four. Okay, yeah, that's that's good. Especially for a guy that's coming off of last year, where he couldn't even make a he couldn't even make a pass last year, right? Yeah, because of the injury and everything. Like it, it's it's such a good bounce back. Um, yeah, and and like I was saying though, if he can keep that consistency up, that contract is going to age really well. He's only making five million through yeah. I think twenty twenty eight. I think it is. Yeah, he'll be what twenty nine when that's done. I think twenty eight. Nah, not even. He's only twenty. Twenty three. Twenty two right now. Twenty three. He's twenty three, so it will be twenty eight. <laughs> Yeah. Right? Is that right, Matt? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you might, maybe. Say, there we go. Um, cool. Look at me doing something right. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, let's get into some of uh, Torts's, uh, Torts's comments here. You're supposed to skip over my boy, Sam Harrison, like that? Oh, sorry. I didn't even see that. There we go. Hey, there we go. All right. A word to say about Harrison here. Oopsie. Uh, yeah, Sam Harrison. Uh, 226 goals against average, 911 save percentage for 20 games. Um, 936 save percentage across the last 10 games. Uh, is that 249 saves on 266 shots? Is that what that is? That is. Uh, what seven, that is. Okay, cool. Uh, 7 2 on record, had a shutout against the Jets. Uh, that was his most shots against in a shutout as well. Um, and that's all three, within the last 10 games. So he, yeah. he's, he's, he's really been stepping it up recently. Yeah. Uh, three three shutouts this year. Uh, obviously, is it's the two-year extension for next season as well. Um, any thoughts on Urson here, boys? I have liked that they have gone, been able to do the Urson Hart, Urson Hart setup. It's it's a really good problem to have. We've we've talked about the organizational depth in, in the goalie in the net for like every episode, I feel like. So far, um, any thoughts on uh, Sammy Boy in that? Harrison's my favorite player at this point. Just going full on it. I, you know, maybe I'm not the most equipped to judge a goalie's talent, but I feel like he's just always coming up with huge saves. And maybe part of that is that Hart's quality saves are disguised more by his like natural positioning. So like you don't realize how big of the saves he's making is. Where Harrison, you're seeing more of that athleticism, but Man, these games, he's just been unstoppable. Um, every game going into it, I mean, like, aside from the last two with Tippett, like, I think Arison has been one of the most enjoyable players to watch on the ice. Yeah. Um, especially, I think especially after the start, too, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. The first three games, he was like, he couldn't stop Saturn if it came towards him. And, you know, now he's able to <laughs> just make, make, make saves at any point. It's, it's yeah. great. If, like if right now, um, like if I if I had to choose a goalie to win me a game, I'm going Harrison. I mean, who knows how long that'll last? Obviously, we haven't seen the large That's sample bold. size. I don't think I'm there yet. Oh, I think, up. I think up I'm over hard. like if if, if, if they, like okay, so if if the playoffs if it's game up, seven right now, if it's game seven, you're, yeah, you're picking it. It's Carter Hart. I, I, I'm, not, saying, I'm, not, I'm not trying to talk about playoffs. You know, like we're not there yet. If the stadium series is Tomorrow, I'm it's putting hard. Arison in. He's it's the hard. one I want to win me that game. The big I don't game, know, man. I, I, and, I'm, and I'm demanding. I'm demanding out of here if I'm hard the next day. I'm <laughs> like, right. I cannot believe well, it's hard in the stadium. It today. does make me wonder, though, with that. Like, I know Arson is playing well, and I don't want you to take this as oh, you don't like torts. It's not that. It's just the fact right, that I, 
I am not I'm not really worried. It's just a thought I had that maybe they're starting Ursa in so many of these games to see how much he can play if Hart doesn't, in case Hart doesn't want to be here. Oh, yeah. And I don't know if that is part of it or what. I'm just, it's just, a, it's a total guess. I could be dead wrong. I hope I am. Or if they want to trade no. him, like they could go both ways. Right. Like, yeah. they want to trade I don't, him. there's a lot of people that say just because they're playing be well, hard. but we got to trade one of them. Because trading him is trading him. You're not trading. Goalies actually... don't get dealt like that at the deadline. No, not at the deadline. I think it, yeah, but he's an RFA. So he's yeah. not a UFA. Like you have more time with an RFA. But it's, right. but it's like it wouldn't make sense anyway. Because no until like the end of 2024 with with Hart yeah. essentially. Like I said, no contenders and, and, are looking to add goalies at the deadline other than Toronto. Yeah, and I don't think it's that Hart doesn't want to be here. Obviously, it's just it's a situation where you're going to have to make a decision, and that's probably why, like you said, they're doing kind of just like a one A one B tandem right now because Harrison can play. play well, right. So, right. Exactly. You can't right. you can't just take him out of the net for the sake of you know playing Hart, but yeah. right. um, especially with the, how many times he's been sick this year. I mean, come on, like. You kind of every year he's sick, pretty much. Yeah, he, so, he's had he's had a minor injury every year he's been in the NHL. Yeah, at some point. Um, not that it's mm-hmm. it's been a, a. I mean, really, every player you know plays through whatever. Yeah, for but sure. he he's he's been out for any like period stretch of time. Maybe it's a four or five six games, um, where someone's had to come in and bail him out. That happened in uh, well, I should say bail him out. That that makes it sound like he's like terrible. Um. That happened in 1920, where Elliot had to go on that stretch for a while, and it was yeah. around. I think it was around the All Star break, and and he played out of his mind. Same, yeah, that was the same thing with the All Star break that year. Like that team, that's how you knew that team was was a better team because they were off ten days, and they came back and they were pretty good. Um, mm-hmm. th- and again, that's 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 just my biggest question with this is. Because, I mean, obviously you guys remember last year, they were actually playing their best hockey of the season up until that point. Go to the All-Star break. They don't play for, I think it was like eight days. And uh, they were horrific when they came back. Like, horrible. Um, and then, it, obviously, it's just at that point, the season was done. But it, it's a different vibe. I think it's a different thing. You're in a playoff spot. They were, like, probably 10 points out at that point. I don't know the exact math. But I think it's – I think it's – I think it's good to see, especially because like, like every other team in Philly is is kind of been struggling. Like the Eagles, they were horrific to end the season. Scobirds. Philly, shut how, up. How'd that turn out? The, how'd that the, turn the, out? Yeah. Okay. So your your four and four and twelve commanders, I'm sure, were great. Wait, wait, I know. Like, I can't, there's seventeen second, games in a season. Now. Now. Yelling at us from outside the playoffs. <laughs> yeah. There's, there's seven. There's seventeen, there's 17 games in a season. It's now, not so like you're like a Chiefs fan like, or something. I mean, yeah, I, I, yeah. I can at least respect you a little bit because you're a Commanders fan and they stink. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It will exactly. So we have to. Way. We have to. We have to cope in our own way. So. This is yeah. good. But yeah. you know, I mean, that's an elite lineup of teams to watch: the Flyers and the Commanders. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was oh brutal for God. a really long time. Yep, yeah. I'm, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm still waiting for my. Yeah, you know, I'm still waiting for my. You know, my benefits from having to suffer through that for so long. But um, <laughs> your the, your free the, dental care from the Washington Commanders. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, I got this one here. So, in case it wasn't obvious already. You know, Briere said it in, in uh, an interview pregame. I, I think it was either, it was either pregame or intermission. Uh, uh, I think it was right around when they were going on that first five game heater. Was uh, Briere was just talking about the hot start? You know, if they were still going to be selling, if if the plan had changed. Tortorella in an interview the other day basically said that um, you know, the plan has not changed whatsoever. And uh, there's he said there's going to be some people upset going to. Uh, when, when deadline comes, when we have to make some moves here because of where we're at in the process, we're talking about where guys fit age wise and contracts. You can't fall in love because if you do, it's going to set you back. So essentially when you have all these guys on expiring deals, Walker, Sealer, Stahl, Paling, Zamula, you know, you got Brink, Hart and Tippett, obviously the big, maybe the bigger name ones. Um, it's, encouraging obviously the fact that they're doubling down on on their plan because you need to have that as an organization to make this the necessary steps to go forward and not set yourself back but at the same time you're walking the line with not only ownership but also the fan base you know they want to see playoff hockey so it's kind of you know a, a unique situation and uh they're trying to you know rebuild kind of while also you know, staying true to the guys that are in the locker room that have the belief that they can go far and, and you know, win playoff games. So, I don't know. Do we have any just kind of general thoughts on that? 
I mean, that comment to me, like Walker stands out as like, I would be shocked if he's not gone. I mean, before Jamie Drysdale, you know, like we were hearing about maybe they were leaning towards keeping him, but I just don't see a universe in which, especially with Torch saying like he likes Sandheim better as a right defenseman too. Like, I just don't see a universe in which you keep Sean Walker an expiring UFA. Like he, he's 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 got to go. Um, it sucks because he he's been great. Does he's he been really fun. have to go though? I mean, like I don't think he has to. I don't think he has he to. Go. If, you, if you're trying to do this rebuild right, like it, it, yeah, but I think you need your vets at times too. Like I'm not. I mean, I'm not. You like, do, but it's, you you, you do. But when you have, no, he doesn't have to go. But and and you he's do need the can. vets at times. But when you have kind of a situation with the fact that you just added in Drysdale, Sanheim, if he moves back to the left, you have York on the left right below him. You have Andre Zamula and, you know, a couple of other options that, on the left side. Bonk, and then maybe. on the right side, yeah, on the, well, on the right side, you have Bonk coming up. You have Risk Alignment already. I mean, he could, he could and you have Drysdale. Team. Right, and yeah. you have Drysdale. So then it, the, it kind of comes out to just not having enough spots because you can't sustain – 11 forwards and 70 for you know the next two seasons that's just not going to work yeah, yeah. No. so what you need to do is you're basically deciding between for and even and a 70 put, role yeah you'd have to decide between sealer and walker for a 70 spot and i really and don't not, think they could see walker there long term no and it's not like and it's not you know you can't put zamula in lehigh he's played well mm. that that's not fair yeah. to him um, yeah. he's their power play guy right now even if he's there he shouldn't that, be their yeah. number one he should be their number two crazy yeah, no, right. I mean, and he's playing so well, you can make him your number one. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I mean, it, it's 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 a hard decision. I really don't have an answer. I mean, I really don't know. I I we I had to, I'd have to get to like game like 60, 65 to really know like are they going to sell? Or are they going to buy? Like they're not going to buy clearly. But what yeah. I mean is like, are they going like, to? What are they going to do? Yeah, like are, well, are, are I, th- I think it's pretty clear that they're I still going to sell. They're yeah. in a playoff spot, and they're like, there's probably no chance. Like, if they get to a point where it's like no chance that they're going to miss, right? Like, say they say mm-hmm. this five game winning streak turns into like twelve or so, or something. There's no way it does, right? But but just just right. say for for you know argument's sake, at that point they're most likely in. That would be fourteen more points added. You know, they'd probably be in first or something like that. Um, they're probably they'd have to lose like 13 in a row or something like that like to probably get right. out if that were to happen it like if they buy it wouldn't be anything crazy and if it was something like that it could it would be like a hockey deal like if they moved walker and they got a center back or something and they moved sealer and they got like a center right. back or something you know what i mean like because they don't really need another defenseman um and that's the other thing you might be able to trade some of these guys right after the right after the playoffs or um, because that's the thing. I mean, what exactly are you trading Walker for at the deadline? For a rental low first. Or, or yeah, yeah. the fact it's, is it it's, it's a little bit different. But I, it's a I little bit different at the deadline, though, than it is in the summer. Yeah, but you have to think of it in the case of Walker because you're gonna trade him from a playoff team to a playoff team. You're not trading him for a rebuild team. It's not like you're helping him out. No, so but either way, he's still going play. to a playoff team. Right, but he already was on one. So I, what I understand is, that. You know what I mean? Like, but, but that that's that's the it, thing. It's just I know. it's well, going that's, from that's one that was what... wasn't expected to be, but might be to one that yeah. was supposed to be, and now definitely. Is. I get. I mean, I don't know. Can you? It's hard. I, I think, mean, do you guys really think you can get a first for Walker? I think, I get think a late you first. probably get a. I think yeah. you could get a late first if a team is really willing to spend that that money if they really need a defenseman at the deadline. Because you can retain half because of that that's salary. Maybe that's the same. And trade. That might be better. You do a sign and trade. You sign into like a smaller deal, and then you ship them away. You get a better package back. Maybe, maybe, but I would think that that, like you were saying, I think that would be more equipped for like the summer because the whole appeal yeah, right. with the deadline is right, yeah. retaining fifty percent and getting you know assets for a guy who's going to help a team in the short term yeah. or the I mean, long. It doesn't term always have family. to be, but it's it's most likely that. Yeah, right. Exactly. He would, and, he would and Walker like, would never agree to a sign and trade, though. Why would he choose that? He'd I rather go to choose where he goes on free agency. Like, yeah, it'd be ideal for us, but he, I mean, he's never he probably that. he's probably been talking to teams at least in some. Well, yeah, but that, that's my point. Like, they, but they wouldn't... Then, he loves playing here. I mean, we've we've heard that before. Yeah, he said yeah. it. Like, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I I'm not, I don't have a problem if they get rid of him. I don't have a problem if they if they keep him. Like, it doesn't. Whatever they want to do. I mean, Jonesy's talked about the blue line. 
a ton. We mentioned that before. I'm fine right. with with um, I'm fine with both. I mean, Sealer. So I think means- Sealer would suck if they lost Sealer because he's a huge part of the D. Um, he's a huge part of, of the D guy. I think yeah, he might he might even lead the entire NHL in block shots. That dude blocks everything that moves. He's got to have over two hundred, at least. Yeah, I mean, like, so and, and that's kind of what... then... sorry to cut you off. No, go, no, you're um, good. Go ahead. What, what we're saying then is, if it's not Walker, then that's what this Torx comment is about. The you can't fall in love because if you do, it's going to set you back. You know, because that that to me is what stands out. Then who are we talking here? Because other ones we've right. got we've got Sealer, but you know. 32 thoughts reported that they're leaning towards re-signing him. And yeah, there really aren't any other options. Well, the I mean, other options yeah. are the clear ones of in terms of you can't fall in love with players, the ones that are ones we would, Hart and Tippett. So if 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 we're believing I think Torrell's comments, to me, I believe that you want Tippett out of here. <laughs> I don't. Yeah, you want to. You want Trevor Zegers. I yeah. Do no, want no. fucking Tippett gone I don't after you lighten up the highlight reel. You don't I think because I've think seen that and it just a, doesn't make sense to me. I think we should trade a winger, a right winger, and I think the clear for, choice for that. Who and for what? Well, I was gonna say sometimes people just say like, "Oh, they should trade this guy," and then don't say for what or who, and it's just like, "Well, what was the point of even saying that?" Yeah, okay, well, so I would trade. Yeah, I was gonna get to that. I would trade. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I'm not even trying to shit on you. I just yeah. think it- no, no, that's fair. I would trade either Tippett or Konechny, and my decision for who would be depending on what uh, Tippett is looking for in terms of an extension. You know, like if Tippett's looking for something absurd, then you trade Tippett as a rental at the deadline. If if he's looking for something reasonable, then I would then I would keep him, and then trade Konechny in the off season. No, <laughs> but I mean, he's not, I, I don't think he's somebody that's going to be mean, demanding. First of all, he's those, not a Toronto guy. Those players, I'll just say this, both of those players sell you tickets. They use Tippett for yeah. just about every marketing thing you can think of, and Konechny could be a captain. Okay, but this is this is a rebuilding team. Like, right, even that doesn't mean games, just, but he like, fits in with that timeline. That. Yeah, and or, you don't just fucking blow up the team because you know how, it's a, it's supposed to be a rebuild. Like, well, Konechny okay, so I, I believe if they wanted to trade Konechny, they could have three years ago. Right, but his value right now is higher than it will ever be than it has yeah. ever been. It and was high. I, I, I think to get you like the eighth overall right, pick in this right. draft. I'm not saying that it right, would, sure. but like, right. But, then um, suddenly we're, 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 we're yeah we're pissed about t- about losing a TK, high. but then we have like Sam Dickinson or Zane Parekh on our prospect list, and we're so, uh, I'm sorry. I'm still used to thinking we're going to probably draft a defenseman. Um, but, you know, like we have someone else. Like we're not just trading them for nothing. We're trading them for a huge right. piece in the rebuild. Right, but I get that. But at the same time, like why would you trade? It, it just it, – it, the timeline just makes no sense. Like if you were going to trade Connect, what it did it this summer going into this year what? and tip it. it like, the, what, age just, is, what age is out of the timeline for a rebuild in your mind? Like for what? Like who's somebody that's like too old to like fit into the plans? Like for you? Like I think anybody like probably over twenty seven. I would say like no, probably that's, that's probably or twenty nine. I was thinking like twenty seven is probably like perfect yeah. age. I was thinking like twenty nine. I think twenty eight or twenty nine. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so yeah. for for me, it's not much about the age thing, right? Like, yeah, like, I mean, sure. You but need like, a balance of both. Yeah. Yeah. We're scratching. We're scratching Brink or Frost now. We're running eleven forwards in seven D, and Mitchkov isn't even here yet. When we have Mitchkov here, we've got right, Mitchkov connecting. Keep in mind that Atkinson will be gone. Paling will be gone. Scott Lawton will probably be gone, and I'd say Delorie and Hathaway are probably gone by that time. That's the. Well, we're not bringing them on the fourth line. That doesn't matter. Fourth line is a mm-hmm. stone thing. Right. Yeah, but that that's roster spots open. Is my point, mm-hmm. but my my view of it is right. Like, okay, just from the the top six wing or the top nine wingers, right, left wing, mm-hmm. right wing, we've got our future. What we were looking at, unless one of them gets traded, we've got Mitchkov, Konechny, Tippett, Farabee. That's already top two lines worth, and then you've got Forster and Brink, and we've got Samu Tuamala. We've got all these other like. And that's assuming we get no one else. You know what I mean? Like we have all these people. And then that's not even counting the fact that like one of Kate's like Kate's might end up playing wing. Like I, I, mean, I, I, I think know, one I of them should be traded. has been hot, but I got to see it more to. Well, fair. You know, but like, I mean, it's only a, a half a season. 
Yeah, but I, I just think that one of one of the wingers should be traded. Oh, I agree with I that. I think Atkinson that should be is, gone after this season. It's just well, impossible, dude. You, you can say Atkinson all you want because it's the easiest target because he's the oldest guy who has the least yeah. impact. Oh, yeah, because he's the, the easiest time, one to get rid of. I completely disagree. Is he has that no trade though? clause. Oh, that's right. Oh, yeah, we forgot. To, and he's getting paid. He has, he has a no trade clause. Too. He has a no yeah. trade clause. He's 34 years old, and he's yeah. making almost $6 million a year for the next yeah, few years. Really go he's not going to waive that either. No, it's not. Yeah, exactly. Not this it, it's, I mean, I don't, it's not a full. Favor, but it's not a full not no movement that he clause, has, I don't believe. He'd go back I don't believe it's maybe. a full no movement clause, but I think he has a no trade list. Um, yeah. I'm just uh, going to look this up real quick. Well, look he what's happening a, in his personal uh, life. He doesn't want to move. So, right, true. That, that too. I mean, he's got, you know, two or three kids, I believe. So he's uh, obviously settling down and, you know, he's got a lot of friends in and the I'm area. Sure he he's got a 10 team no trade again. list. He probably doesn't want to move cities again. Probably not. No, he's got yeah, a ten team. Would, no would he go list. back to Columbus though? He probably would go back to. Columbus. I probably don't want. Yeah, they would I think take he would him, go though. back to Columbus. I just don't know where they would fit him. That's what and obviously it doesn't really doesn't uh, really make yeah. sense for them. No, to, just city wise. You know, he gets scratched there yeah. too. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um. um kind of just to wrap up this topic. I think you know Tortorella obviously alluded to the fact that they're still going to sell, and um, I, I think it's pretty clear that you know that's going to be what happens. But I think what Will was saying is actually kind of interesting because there's different kinds of selling you can do. You can, you know, completely blow it up and do what all the tanking teams do and, you know, trade your top guys, or you can kind of just moderately sell. We saw when they did it in, um, so, you know, aside from the G trade, they just traded a couple guys. They traded Braun for a third, uh, you know, whoever else, like just minor kind of selling off the, the guys on expiring deals. Do they, you know, go the more moderate route and just sell maybe, you know, stall, maybe Walker, Paling or hold on to maybe a couple of those guys for cheaper deals in the future, sealer maybe, or what would they do if let's say, for example, right. Connect me. They got a really good uh, trade off for him over the summer, but they weren't really ready to pull the trigger because they wanted to see if maybe his value would go up even more, or if he was going to cement himself as a, you know, the guy here, if they feel like maybe it's just a pat and an offer that they can't pass up on that maybe even got better, do they circle back on that and just completely pull the trigger and shake things up? Or are they more just completely moderate sellers that just kind of anybody on expiring deals is who you get rid of? Moderate, in my opinion. There's there's, there's nothing really no, – none of those moves make sense at the deadline. Um, and if it – like you said, if it was the summer, it would have to be a bigger thing. And it, it just – it doesn't – it just doesn't make sense to me to trade a guy like Tippett, to trade a guy like Connecting and like – you have to look at the business side of it too. Like again, like I said, Tippett's used in just about every marketing thing you can think of. Um, mm-hmm. He's obviously a fan favorite already. Right. You have Connecting, who's a, who's a fan favorite, and right. he sells you tickets. I mean, you, you, mm-hmm. you have to you have to think of that in some way because how much money the, the org has lost in the past yep. couple of years. Um, and I know nobody wants to hear it, but you know that's unfortunately that's the reality of it. So I mean, I don't know. It's 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 hard for me to to really say because I again, like I said, I don't really have a definite answer right now, like on the the selling part of it because it's they there's still a ton of there's still half a season left, thirty six games, thirty whatever it is. I forget thirty seven, forty five. Yeah, so that's thirty seven. Yeah, thirty seven game. Yeah, so way to go. We'll see. Yeah, yeah, good numbers guy. Let's go. Let's go. Um, all right, so we got a little bit of a uh, split here. Um, oh, I just banged the hell out of my desk. Uh, I'm going to hear from our friends over at Blade Shades. So if you are a Flyers fan looking to share your fandom, uh, we'd like you to check out the Hockey Stick Sunglasses created by our friends over at Blade Shades. The group has both polarized and non-polarized options and several pro teams available, which makes them the perfect gift for a hockey fan in your life. They've even got goalie stick models available for the attendee in your life as well. Uh, we, for Flight Guys, have a 25% discount code for you when you use code uh, Mayor25, that's M-A-H-E-R-25, at checkout on teamclicks.com. That's T E A M C L I X.com. Uh, and again, it's Mayor 25, M A H E R 25 at checkout for 25% off. All right, boys. Uh, guys, want to uh, send it over to uh, Scotty Hartnell? Um, 
I think this was a really good interview. Uh, we had a lot of good stuff that came out of it. Um, some good perspective, I think, in, on Hartnell and his playing career and, um, you know, kind of his, his, his TV, uh, you know, transitioning and, and all that in Columbus and torts and, and everything too. I think it was, I think it was really good. Uh, any, any uh, thoughts on the heart, uh, you know, the conversation we had with uh, Scotty Hartnell. He's a real smart guy, really good input on a lot of like even current fire stuff as well as the past. Um, really great crest. Awesome. It was awesome having him on. Yeah, no, I, I had a blast. It was a lot of fun. Mm hmm. Hundred percent. Yeah, definitely a smart guy who's, you know, done obviously playing and then now in his post career kind of broadcasting. Uh, a lot of good insight from both, you know, his experiences and obviously with the teams going, going, uh, everything going on with the team now. So, yeah, good one. First of many, right? Yep. So, let's help. Samuel, let's go. Let's go. That's it. That's all you got. All right. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, yeah, we'll uh, send it over to uh, Scotty Hartnell. All right. Welcome back, everybody, here to Four Fly Guys. This is our first guest appearance uh, here on the pod for episode eight. Uh, we got Flyers legend who played 517 games in the Orange and Black, scoring 157 goals, 169 assists for 326 points uh, in 908 penalty minutes. Um, he is a, the, one of the more great characters of Flyers hockey in the past maybe 10, 10 or so years. Um, obviously, a, a huge fan and favorite, Scott Hartnell. Uh, Hartsey, thanks so much for doing this. We appreciate it, and uh, welcome to the pod. Yeah, thanks, thanks for the, the beautiful intro there. I, lo I love my time in Philadelphia. Uh, you know, it was sad to leave, but, uh, you know, that, that kind of happens in the business. You're kind of a piece of meat. You kind of uh, get sold or traded and uh, beat down at other places, but I, I really enjoyed my, my seven years here in Philly, uh, some of my best – best years uh, in my career and just had an absolute blast. Yeah, no, for, for, for sure. And and just to uh, kind of go into that too, uh, Hartsey, it, just to, you know, just to kind of give you a, a softball here in the beginning. Are, are, <laughs> is there any like, you know, years that in the beginning or any, you know, like moments or any like favorite years that you had here as a flyer um, that, that you can kind of look, look back to? I uh, yeah it was it was probably like my my first exhibition game was actually wild uh you know came in there was some, you know Simone Gagne Mike Richards was a young kid Jeff Carter was a young kid and you know in training camp you're trying to get your your timing down your feel down uh, all the touches whatever first exhibition game in Philadelphia and after the first period you know you don't want to get hurt you're trying to just to get the timing down get a couple hits in and and going through the tunnel uh <laughs> Uh, into the dressing room and, and the fan comes out like and leans down over the tunnel. He's like, come on, Hartnell, hit somebody. I'm like, <laughs> I look back and Mike Knubel is behind me. I'm like, Jesus. I'm like, what's going on here? He goes, man, get used to it. He's like, you got to play hard in this city. Like they'll love you if you play hard, but you know, you can't have a, you know, a soft period. Right. I was like, Oh man. So I went out and ran a couple guys and the next, next intermission, he's like, a boy, baby, a boy. <laughs> so it was, you know, one of those, uh, you know, kind of tough love situations right from the bat to kind of get you immersed into the, the this Philadelphia cu culture and, and uh, you know, kind of made you made you aware if you're playing good and, and they let you know if you were playing bad. And, and uh, you know, just this pr pretty special, uh, you know, fan group and fan base that, that uh, you know, I'll always cherish and, you know, kind of one of the reasons why I came back to the area. That's great. Yeah. And so basically um, going off of that, I've, I kind of wanted to ask a question about more about something that happened recently. And that was something that's a really hot topic during this season. Uh, that being the, uh, the Gauthier situation. Yeah. 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 Obviously got to talk about it. But um, basically I was wondering if, if something, if a player had done something like that, basically forcing his way out of a city back when you were first coming into the league and he was coming to your team, how would that be received by the guys in the locker room? Would he be seen as more of like an entitled guy or is that kind of just like you kind of look past it? Yeah, I think, I think very entitled, you know, no, well, number, number one, he's, he's uh, probably a different player than, you know, kind of, I was touted, uh, you know, coming in the NHL, this guy's got an elite shot. He's going to be a, a really sick player in the NHL. Right. And uh, you know, he was all for coming to Philly and then all of a sudden he just pumped the brakes, slammed on the brakes and said, uh, you know, don't talk to me. Don't uh, come watch me to, to the Flyers. They kept that under the wraps for over a year, right? And, and uh, you know, basically get me out of here, right? And, and you know, for me, 20, what, five years ago, I guess 2000, I was drafted 
if I would have done that to the national predators, I would have looked like, <laughs> looked like, Oh my God, who is this goof, you know, coming in and thinking he's all this and, uh, and a bag of tricks. Right. So, uh, you know, I, I, totally different upbringings, right. I'm Western Canada, you know, solid, uh, you know, I think I was a solid kid, uh, you know, great values. Not that this, you know, uh, Gauthier kid does not have that, but, you know, I think uh, the red car- carpet was rolled out for him when he was a, a young kid, right? The, the the national development team, the Royal Juniors, uh, you know, BC and, and this and that. And, and, you know, I think the one thing that probably hurt his feelings was, uh, you know, when he wanted to sign here after his first year, you know, I think it was told to him, that hey you gotta you gotta earn your spot on the team and and if you don't earn that spot you might have to go to Lehigh Valley and you know play in the minors and I think for a kid drafted that high with all this upside you know I think that was a, maybe a, a slap in the face for the kid and and was like I can't believe that you would talk to you know Cutter Gauthier that way that's what he was kind of thinking and saying or his camp was saying to him or whatever right I I, I don't know that but that's kind of what I my personal uh, kind of feelings about it is and and you know lo and behold the you know daddy b did a great job and jonesy and those guys uh getting a pretty good return right drysdale's played a few games now in in uh, a flyers uniform has looked really sharp a uh, really good skater really good defender and and has kind of fit right in with uh, the flyers mold how young they are and and uh how kind of an up-and-coming team and uh, just a huge huge surprise this year obviously definitely and i was kind of thinking that maybe like he could be walking sort of a different situation over in Anaheim because they they have a core of young players like that. They're all sort of like that mindset. So I feel like he could probably walk in that locker room and they would just look right past it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, for sure. And, and who like you, you get a young stud like this, right? Like, uh, you know, they're comparing him to, you know, maybe not as good as Austin Matthews, but the guy that can put, you know, 20, 30 uh, plus cookies in, in the net, right. You're, you're going to love yeah. this guy on your team. And, and I'm sure he's not a bad human being. Right. But just kind of the way this thing played out, uh, you got to have some questions marks about it. And I'm sure that's kind of how the flyers brass feel and how, you know, media feels, you know, covering the flyers. Like this, this is a great team right now. That's playing unbelievable. You can sign after the season in two months, come in for a heck of a playoff run. Right. And, and help this team, you know, maybe win a couple rounds or, or, you know, beyond, excuse me. So I, I, I just kind of looking at it from, you know, kind of taking a step back. I, I just little, just a little shocked how it all played out, but hey, heck, it, it is what it is. Yeah, uh, uh, looking forward, you can't find too many twenty-one-year-old right-hand defensemen with great skill, great puck moving ability, a great shot, uh, a great kid. From what I've seen so far in the, you know, the week or so that I've uh, you know kind of been talking to him and and uh, just kind of seeing him up close. So uh, there, there's uh, it's kind of uh, uh, just a you, you, out of a bad situation, maybe what you thought it was, you, you've turned it into a, an epic positive. Definitely. Yeah, no, definitely. And, and, you know, Scott, I think going off of that, too, I mean, obviously right now as we record this, the Flyers are, are rolling. They've won five straight. <laughs> yeah. um, they, they, you know, it, it's been a really exciting season with that. And um, obviously you, you just mentioned your, your first year here in Philly, um, 2007-08, you guys made it to the Eastern Conference Finals. Is there anything that you kind of see um, from that team that, you know, that team that went deep and, you know, was the worst team in the league before? Uh, before that year, you guys get team and yeah. then you get team and you get yourself. Is there anything from that team that you maybe noticed that's a little bit in, in this team in any sort of way? You know what? That's actually a great question. I never really thought of it like that. But, uh, you know, there was also uh, Jason Smith, who was our captain mm-hmm. that year, came over from Edmonton, Joffrey Lupul, Danny B, myself, Kimo Tiemann. So that's five, mm-hmm. five really, really good hockey players, right, to come in and throw into a team that has a Mike Richards, a Jeff Carter, uh, Simone Gagne, right? Uh, you look at the Canubel, other uh, yeah. Matt Carl, yeah, Knubel, Mar- uh Matt Carl, Coburn, like all those guys, right? And 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 for me, because I, you know, I wanted to get to know everybody, right? So I kind of do a new new team, first time traded, you know, kind of freaking out, <laughs> you know, signed a big contract at at the time, right? I'm like, oh my god, I gotta, you know, meet the guys, feel comfortable in the city. So came, I came out probably. I wouldn't say two to three, probably three weeks early. Right. And, and chemo did the same thing. He had his kids in school, all the new guys came in and everyone that was there the year before came in early. So it was like the whole team came together three weeks before our training camp. Right. And we're battling, we're you know, scrimmaging, you're skating, you're, you're bagging yourself after just to get in shape for this training camp. And, you know, lo and behold, if you fast forward to this year, 
John Tortorella said to everybody, like, hey, I kind of want everyone here three weeks before the September 21st. So, on you know, the September long weekend, I don't want you spending time in your lake house or wherever in <laughs> Finland or wherever you're from, get your butt to town and, and let's, let's build this thing right way. Right. And, and everyone was here three or four weeks before training camp. Everyone was, was in shape before training camp happened. John Turtle, Tortorella's training camp is, is by far the hardest thing you can ever do as a, as a hockey player. It's, it's like you're, you're, <laughs> he mind screws. Yeah. He, he basically abuses your body you know, physically, mentally, you're just, you're just drained. And then you, he builds you back up and into this team that that's looking like the flyers are right now. Right. So anyway, so to get back to your question about, do you see similarities? hundred percent. We were there three weeks before everyone was here three weeks before they went through training camp. We went through training camp and then all of a sudden you have this team with zero expectations, right? Cause everyone's picking you to be dead, dead stinking last. And <laughs> you come together as a team and, and you, and you're playing and you're playing flipping hard hockey. Right. Like, and, and it's like, they beat Dallas yesterday and they made them look like children, basically how, <laughs> how, how they, how they dominate them, how they outplayed them, how they just kind of gave them nothing really. And just took it to them. It, it was actually an incredible, incredible hockey game. So, uh, you know, for right now, uh, you know, like you said, after this five game heater, they're on this, this is a, a legit hockey team. Yeah, no, for sure. And and kind of, you know, similar to that, you were here from 07 to 2014. You know, you saw the 2012 Pittsburgh series, the uh, 2010 Cup run, even though you guys didn't end up getting the result you wanted, obviously, it was still really, it was a miracle run from, from that point. And Mr. Snyder was still alive. Mac Miller was the, you know, the locker room win yeah. song. That was uh, <laughs> a lot of cool stuff going on there. So just kind of similarly to that, from your perspective, it seems like here, Jonesy Briere and, you know, towards Hilferty, everybody involved have a vision that they're actually set on and they're committing to. From your perspective, would you say the Flyers are actually back? For, for sure. I, you know, the game last night, it was a Thursday night game uh, against a good team, Western Conference team, right? You don't have the kind of rivalry that you have with the Rangers or Devils or, you know, whatever, but uh, it was jammed. Like, and it was loud. And, and the goals that were scored, beautiful goals. Uh, the penalty shot goal it? by Scott, Scotty Lawton, it was ridiculous, right? Yeah. It, it was, it cool. was, yeah, it was intense, man. And, and I'm like, from the beginning of the year, where Tippett was, oh, his goal off the charts. Yeah. It's got to be the top, top few of the league, I think, uh, thus far, yeah. right? Uh, uh, oh, more just over halfway through the season, just the spinorama looked like Denny Savard, uh, you know, back in the eighties, <laughs> in the eighties, right? How he did it, just top cheese back end. Uh, you know, sometimes when you score a goal, you know, I, I haven't scored goals maybe that nice, but you're like, shit, I just blacked out there for a second. I don't know how I just made that move and meant top cheese like, <laughs> like that. So, uh, you know, all that being said, it's it's it's. I don't know. It's just, it's just so fun to watch these guys and, and uh, just battle it out. And, and you tell that they're like a real, real team, real togetherness in this team. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, and, and obviously um, last night's game you were watching, um, you did the the pregame, the intermission postgame shows Yep. Uh, from time to time. Obviously you're in the broadcasting booth with JJ. Um, do you see that as a future career for you? down the line uh, doing the color guy stuff, maybe more long-term. Uh, it, it's funny. Cause it, it's when J, uh, Jonesy left, I called, uh, you know, our boss kind of right away who uh, Sean Alexiak, who does the the talent for, I think all the, the, the Philly sports there for NBC sports Philly. And I said, Hey, I, I would love a chance. I can't be full time because I, you know, I have young kids that are five and a half, three and a half and two. And, you know, I love being home and helping out in the mornings and, and, you know, at nights and stuff like that. And, and, and to be a color guy, you literally travel like an NHL hockey player. You're, you're on the 10 day road trips. You're on the week long road trips, right? Cause you're going to city to city. You're in the building calling the games. And, you know, I, I didn't want to commit to that. I don't even know if I was in the run, running for that, but you know, I was like, Hey, it would be fun to dabble a little bit. And, you know, I love the Flyers. It's, you know, I bleed orange just like, you know, all you guys and, and uh, the, the passionate fans in this in this city. And I was like, I would love a chance to to do that, right? So I've, I've called a few games and my record isn't that good uh, when I when I do call the games, but but I, I, I it's kind of like it's you're, you're into it, you're intense, you're it's like you're playing again 
you know, you see the plays develop and, and you just, I try and put my spin, my flavor, my kind of comedy, I guess, on, on these plays that are happening. So it, it's, it's something where, you know, I guess it doesn't sound good to say, but like, I don't want to aspire to be the best color guy in the world and, and make a million bucks and be, you know, kind of traveling the world or traveling the U S and Canada doing it. But it, it, it definitely adds a little flavor and a little excitement to, you know, a couple of days before you, you're following the teams that they're going to be playing. I'm doing the uh, game on Tuesday against Tampa Bay, you know, still a lot of the uh, same guys that have played there when I was playing uh, six years ago. Right. So, and they've won the cups and you're watching these guys in the playoffs battling. So, you know, it's, it's pretty easy to know the names of them and, and kind of the, the, the situation they're in. They're fighting for a playoff spot uh, a little bit behind the flyers. So, uh, it, it, it's, it's cool. It, it is really cool. I, I love doing the pre and post with Al Morganti and Ashlyn, the, the, the Southern Florida girl that hates snow and she's freaking out. She didn't have a, a windshield scraper and Al Morganti actually <laughs> asked her the other day, he goes, did you get your snow driver's license? Uh, you know, when you got here to, to PA, like if it snows, you have to have a snow driver's <laughs> license and he's dead serious. And we're on the set and she's like, what? she's like he she turned like white and she and i was like yeah i'm like i got mine oh my wallet's upstairs you know like i'm playing along with her too. and she's like are you are you serious al like you know and finally me and al busted out laughing and uh the poor poor florida girl kind of t- took that hook line and sinker but uh she's she's been amazing so i'm i'm super happy with what i'm doing for sure <laughs> yeah that's awesome, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah and and it's and, it, and it's been just uh, sorry to cut you off but no, you're good. like th- this year this year has been like we're smiling every after every game almost yeah. it's been unbelievable right the last two years i've been doing it, it's like oh you know it was a tough break on the you know bad bounce off the boards they yeah. scored it was you know four to three or five to three whatever just another tough loss it's it's fun talking about winning teams just like every you know you guys as well too right it's it, it's just it's pure enjoyment when you're seeing these guys work their tails off and, and compete uh, win or loss right but it's obviously when they win it's it's pretty epic yeah no i can imagine that you know it's a long season regardless but losing can make it seem even longer so it's great that this is happening and it, you know, it's, it's, it, may, it probably feels like time's flying at some points like that, but um, not to, um, not to shine a little bit of a negative light, but just kind of being real here. We have a lot of season left to go and, you know, there's a lot of stuff that can happen and stuff moves quickly in standings uh, as the season goes on. So yep. um, if by the end of the season, the team finishes a few points uh, out of a wild card spot and we end up with a mid round, a mid first round pick, um, do you step back and still look at the uh, the season as an overall win and a step in the right direction? And if we find ourselves there, how do you, how do you sell the message to the fans that the rebuild is still the priority? Oh, you you, you can't you can't tell Danny Breer, Jonesy, you know those guys can't tell the team to tank, right? Yeah. There you yeah. can't tell John Tortorella to coach this team to lose. There's no <laughs> flipping way in the world he would ever get that out of his mouth. And the guys that are competing on the on the ice. You can't say, hey, let this one in Carter Hart. Hey, Sam Harrison, you're playing too good right now. Hey, t- tank it a little bit more often, yeah. right? They're, they're playing as hard as they they're playing as hard as they can. They're playing for contracts. They're playing for dollars and cents, right? You know, they're 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 doing all these things for the for their own careers, which is awesome. And and you're playing for the silly city of Philadelphia and the Flyers. This is like one of the biggest stories in the NHL, I think, right now. How how well these guys are are playing. So. Uh, you know, you, you know, yeah. Hypothetically, if they shit the bed here, the, <laughs> the next twenty games and and are five points out, yeah, it's it's dip, disappointing, and you know, wonder what happened or or whatever. But you know, at the end of the day, it's it it is what it is. You gotta you gotta uh, you know, you're making your own bed. You gotta sleep in it, right? So it's it's something yeah, that they're still still doing. You know, uh, they're in a rebuild. Like, are, I, they're not going to be buyers, right? Uh, th- this yeah. deadline. You know, are they gonna? you know, move some guys that have kind of had their names out there and, and, you know, get some, you know, quality draft picks back, you know, I, I, lucky, <laughs> lucky I'm not, I'm not paid enough to, to have a, a great opinion on it, but those, <laughs> those guys are making those tough decisions and, and, you know, they'll make them in due course and, 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 uh, you know, everyone will have to deal with them. Right. But uh, uh-huh. I, it's, it's, it's tricky to say, Oh, you know, maybe trade a Sean Walker when he's been playing so good. I, I love the way this guy plays you know, I would sign him, but I'm not, I'm not in there with Dan and, and uh, Jonesy and, and Danny B right. To figure out, 
okay, we need this guy for the next, you know, three years. Is it a three-year plan or is it a six-year plan, right? Yeah. So I, I, I don't know the, the ins and outs of that, but I, I just like the way they're playing and, and how they've rotated guys in and out of the lineup, the 11, 4, 7, D. It, it's been a, a, a whirlwind for those guys, and it sucks when you're out, but when you're in, you better play your heart out because you want to stay in the lineup too. So it, it's a little bit of competitiveness, which is nice too. Definitely. Yeah. No, 100%. I, I, I think the one thing too that, that – <laughs> might look at with this team is that, you know, like they're doing all this without a captain um, and they're, and they're doing it with, with only law who, who's technically is, is the captain. Cause he, you know, he wears the a, yeah um, but Scott, it, it, if, if, if you walked in, you were obviously, you know, head coach and, and you were able to kind of make that decision, who would, who, who would uh, be your choice for uh, getting next captain? Well, I think, you know, one of the best players this year consistently is Sean Couturier, right? He's been here yeah. forever. He, he had a jersey on before he got hurt two years ago, right? And and <clears throat> he doesn't have one on this year. And, uh, you know, I think he was a little bit disappointed about that. But, you know, it hasn't been made a big deal. And, and that's that's good on Coots, right? He, he's playing he's playing his game. He, he hasn't changed really one bit from when I played with him, for, uh, I don't know, 2011 maybe, or something like that, like when he came in the league for, for three years. And, and – He's he's played the same way. He's he's competitive. He's got the best stick. He can make sneaky little plays. He's not the super fastest guy, uh, but he, he scores goals. He makes plays. He wins faceoffs. Kills penalties. He he is like the ultimate uh, competitor. The ultimate flyer for me, right? And not that he's fighting guys. He he. I don't even know if he's got has an NHL fight, but uh, he he does get ticked off. He plays the best when he's playing against you know Crosby and Malkin and and those guys, right? So he he, he gets fired up and and. Uh, you know, you're looking for a captain and, 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 you know, probably it's, it's, you look at it, it's like Torres didn't want to name one last year. I get that, you know, maybe he could have done something this year. I'm sure he wanted to see what Coots could do, uh, you know, see the, the young group kind of all, everything core, but you know, at the end of the day, it's everyone's doing something, everyone's bringing something to the table, right? You, you're not just looking for one guy to say, to give us a raw, raw speech, right? It's, it's, it could be Atkinson. It could be, you know, Mark Stahl, the D man could be, you know, Sean Walker silently doing his, his thing on the ice. Uh, you know, Garnet Hathaway, uh, Delorey, those guys are so well-respected. So do you need to have it on someone's Jersey? I, I, <laughs> I don't know. Right. There's a couple teams lately that have gone without, uh, without a candidacy for, for a year anyway, just to kind of figure out kind of their locker room and, and where they're headed to. So. Yeah. yeah, I've never felt um, that it's like really a necessary thing. I feel like once like you're in a position that you've established <laughs> who's really going to be there moving forward and who's like stepping up the most, I, f- I feel like then is when you when you should name it. Yeah, well, look at like uh, you know Colorado Landeskog's the captain, right? He's been out for two years, and, and yeah. Nate McKinnon's the best player, probably the top three best players in, in the world, right? So, you know, so if it's going to be your best player, why didn't he take it, right? Yeah, I know he wears right. an assistant mm-hmm. captaincy, so it, it's you know for those guys it doesn't really matter, you know, what's, what's on your Jersey or what's going on. You're playing for the front of your Jersey. You're playing for your city. You're playing for your town. And that's, I think what, what uh, the best part about, you know, the flyers right now is what they're doing and, you know, good teams do that. Right. And then there's teams that are kind of near the bottom every year that kind of haven't figured that out yet or have, you know, maybe the wrong, uh, wrong leadership in there or whatever. Yeah. Um, so to kind of, Look on the bright side, opposite of Sam's question. You know, obviously the Flyers right now <laughs> they're <laughs> they're, uh, they're second in the Metro, right? right? So right now they're in a playoff spot. So yeah. if they do end up making the playoffs this year, who do you envision maybe being the the Briere, the Mister Playoffs of of this Flyers team? Who do you think takes their game to a new level in the playoffs? Well, I, you can't underestimate uh, Travis Konechny. You know how he plays and how he battles and team when when the game gets tough uh, you know he gets going right uh, Owen Tippett is another guy that's on record this year for being the fastest guy on, on the ice uh, you know this NHL season so that's really impressive uh, you, you look at the defense you know Sanheim's been a workhorse uh, you got the new kid Drysdale Cam York has been you know phenomenal right uh, you know you the goal the goal the goalies both goalies have been uh, a coach's dream right coach's dream about having uh you know, basically two number ones that you can put in there. Uh, you know, a number uh, Carter Hart's probably their number one for sure. But it, it just seems like when when either one's playing, the team plays great in front of them. So that's a good. That's a uh, a coach's dream. Like I said, uh, you know, who else? Coots has been unreal. 
you know, he, he's, he, when, you know, playoff time comes around, he's a guy that you need healthy and, and going. So Cam okay, Atkinson's a sneaky little player, uh, you know, that can score goals and get hot and, and he's been hot lately. Thank God. Uh, so, so it's, uh, you know, uh, you look around the whole locker room, you know, that it could be, you need to win in the uh, Stanley cup playoffs. Number one, you need your, your best players to be the best players. Number one, you need a couple kind of silent horses to, to score big goals, the third, fourth lines, especially the third line, probably to score some big goals and be difference maker in seasons. And then uh, you need, you need a hot goaltender to take you through. And then uh, ultimately you need a little luck too, right? (laughs) You can't, you you can't get through that without, you know, uh, having a a good balance or, uh, you know, a break on, on an offside call where they scored to tie it up and and it goes back. You know, you need a little bit of luck that way Mm -hmm. as well, but, uh, ultimately you need your best boys to be the best boys. And then you need some, some, some kind of workhorses on the back end, uh, you know, doing their thing as well. For sure. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, you just mentioned Cam Atkinson. He, uh, he posted on his Instagram story the other night that you guys were at the Sixers game together. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> it was a pretty, pretty cool moment. He got to link up with Reggie Jackson. They obviously went to BC together. Um, you know, he hasn't really had it easy as of late, you know, obviously he missed the entirety of last season, 26 game goal list drought just recently got that going. He's, he's looking good now scored a power play goal against Dallas the other night. Just talk yeah, a little he, bit about, um, talk a little bit about your relationship with Cam and just how kind of he's been doing on and off the ice. Yeah. Yeah. We were stallmates for three, three years. So he was sitting beside me in the dressing room in, in Columbus, just a, a great, a great human being. <laughs> Number one, he's, he's a funny guy, just a, a very confident. I would say, I wouldn't say cocky individual, but he, he, he's just a, a great human being. He's got a great wife and great kids, uh, kids the same age as uh, our wives get along really well. So it was kind of cool to have that experience at, at uh, the Wells Fargo center, watching the Sixers and, and, you know, kind of meeting one of the, <laughs> one of the Denver nuggets, you know, I didn't know anything about him. I was Googling him on the, on the way down there, Reggie Jackson. I was like, yeah, man, he's a pretty good uh, a baseball player back, back in the day. And so we were just giggling about that. So it, uh, uh, but yeah, you know, he, he was, you know, you miss a whole year. You don't know how you're feeling. You know, I knew, you know, obviously talking to him and being with him before training camp and how he was feeling the, you know, three weeks before training camp, training camp was feeling good. Come in and you have all this energy. And for a month and a half, he was a, a really dependable guy to score goals, get in the action, make points, create plays, create some action. And then, you know, kind of it, it dipped for a bit, right? And and Torx was trying to get him out of it. And, you know, it was at the point where, you know, hey, I, I, there's some other guys playing better. So, you know, he got uh, scratched there against Columbus, which is, you know, embarrassing, you know, number one. I've been I've been scratched against old teams as well, uh, you know, with Torx. And, and uh, you know, so I know exactly how it feels. It's not fun, right? And, and you know, the next, I said, said, this is going to, Torts is going to look like a genius because he's going to, he's going to come in and he's just going to go like this. The next game, I don't know if it was in Minnesota or there was another game at home, but anyway, he created uh, in overtime, uh, a penalty in overtime where we scored the goals and Mula shot at Farabee, tipped it in, right? Uh, So that was in Minnesota. In Minnesota, scored two goals, uh, you know, it was finally his first (laughs) couple goals in a long time. Had an assist in uh, St. Louis, it was, and then scored again against Dallas. So he, he's finding his way, and you know he's going to be one of those guys. Like I said, the, those kind of workhorses in the playoffs that's going to need to to have a good, a really good playoff run to to win a few rounds, right? And that's you know if you, you talk about just making the playoffs, okay, that's fun. You know we were you know a pretty good team, blah blah blah, whatever. We made the playoffs, but if you want to get in the playoffs and make some damage Atkinson's going to be one of those guys that's going to have to uh, have a big playoff run and and you know that's in the second third line Forster needs to find his groove again you know those those, those guys that are supposed to be scoring need to score and, and they, they know that too it's not like it's rocket scientists right it's rocket science they, they know that they need to, to go to, to uh, get in the playoffs number one ultimately and then to make a little bit of run everyone needs to step it up yeah no definitely um one just uh one last one here for me um before we yep. kind of you know, wrap this one up um i wanted to ask you if there was a, you know any chance that you could tell us uh about the story of of uh you and voracek having to go to a uh, fat camp in uh 23 after the lockout 2013 well, uh, well yes i i <laughs> i was 
probably about I don't know I don't really remember Fat Camp, but I remember <laughs> I remember Paul Holmgren asked me he's like, hey, do you want to go go to down to uh, I don't know if it was Lehigh Valley or Adirondack to start practicing with the team because it was kind of the CBA was getting close, and I was like, I've never been to the minors before, you know previous to that and i was like oh, i don't want to go down the minors like no, no i'm good then i got on the way scale and i was training a little bit and it was kind of discouraging right because you go back to 2004 when we got locked out for the whole season i uh that, that was very devastating right you missed a uh, you know million bucks in playing back then in, in 04 which was huge money uh you know you're uh, devastating right so this other one i was kind of you know kind of freewheeling kind of a few trips here and there i was in la for uh, a couple Playboy Mansion parties and kind of hanging, <laughs> hanging out. That's another whole uh, episode we could talk about. But <laughs> and I was like, oh my god, I'm like two thirty two. I, I I was like, you know, uh, right around Christmas time. I'm like, shit, my my playing weight's like, you know, two fifteen something like that. So I had some some poundage to lose. So uh, it's it's amazing what you can do when you eat like a bird. You can have salads and chicken or salads. <laughs> salmon and and it would do your normal workouts but it like for me i would turn into a different human being if i didn't have carbs or bread or anything like that so it was like oh like a week or 10 days of like like being a crazed animal because i'm like i don't feel like my normal self but literally you drop weight in in you know 10 days and and then uh, then i was fine but yeah it was uh i was in fat cap once in in columbus too where i didn't meet the body fat to you know, halfway during, uh, halfway through the year with Taurus and uh, <clears throat> me and Brandon Dubinsky had to be on uh, ride bikes after games and, you know, after on practice days, get on the bike for 20 minutes and, and do some sort of a ride or whatever. So that, that wasn't fun either. So it's, <laughs> when you get a little bit embarrassed, like <laughs> embarrassed like that, you got to uh, kind of shape up. So those are my couple, couple experiences about being in fat camp. <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, I had one more for you, Scott. Um, so uh, with the Flyers, obviously, G and the Ogs were two of your more notable line mates that you were uh, skated with. But um, throughout your career, whether it be with Nashville, Columbus, or Philly, do you ever feel like there was anybody who had an underrated skill set that you felt never really got the recognition they really deserved? Uh, <clears throat> well, probably – well, Paul Korea, he, obviously, he's in the Hall of Fame. He, he was a spectacular uh, player, personality, competitor. Like, he, he made you – compete that every practice we play games uh you know uh whether it's tipping games uh you know a goaltender and uh, it was juice boy or nothing you know no money or nothing like that but like if you if i tipped in you know out of five pucks uh, you tip it you get one point if it went in you got two points and and we'd go back and forth uh you know him and i for for juice boy gatorades right so yeah. it was it was pretty special when you'd win you just sit there in the locker room and and you just have your head hand out like this, and and sure as shit, he'd come around. Go on, like Paul Korea coming around with a Gatorade with a glass of ice, and would pour it in you. There you go, sir. You know, and, <laughs> and, and vice versa, right? If I lost, I got so pissed off that, uh, you know, that I lost, and I he's like, oh no, I don't want grape Gatorade. I want red Gatorade. You know, so I'd have to go back to the to the fridge and and open up a new thing. So. Uh, it was pretty pretty special those those kind of moments yager was it was uh a competitor as well and you know i remember a couple of times i uh, didn't have the best practice uh whatever and he would call me out and he's like scotty i didn't come here to to practice with a person like practices like that we practice how we play you know and he'd be like you need to be better in practice and yeah. and uh so th those you know few lessons along the way right and, and um you can listen to them and take them to heart and and learn from them or just be like, whatever, I'm, you know, making good money. Screw you, Yogs, right? No, but I, <laughs> I, I listened to him and, and those guys were pretty special players, but uh, I don't know, Mike Richards, you know, the, the skill that he had, how competitive he was, he didn't have the, the, the toe drags and that kind of stuff, but his competitive spirit was, was, you know, by far, you know, bigger than anyone else that I've ever played with too. So uh, an absolute warrior. So uh, yeah, it'll yeah, be few, great to see him those... come back. I know. Yeah. I can't wait to see him. I, I've uh, texted him. I'm looking forward to seeing him next week. So it's uh, it'd be pretty cool playing that little alumni game. I got to get skating again. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. That should be great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And then um, just, you know, last one for me, the stadium series, obviously coming up. Um, just talk a little bit about, you know, maybe your experience with the, uh, the 24 seven thing that they, they did on HBO with you guys and the Rangers and the, just kind of your experience with the outdoor games, obviously, because they're, you know, the, it takes to a whole new level. 
I played in two of them. Uh, one in Boston at Fenway Park, which was wild, right? Where we were dressing in the visitors' dressing room at, at Fenway Park, <laughs> which is like all the legends in baseball that grew up there and played there. It was like, okay, where's where this guy sit? Where'd A Rod sit? You know, where'd this guy sit? So that was kind of neat. Uh, and then obviously at the link was, or at the um, Citizens Bank Park, that was awesome, uh, awesome as well. Uh, two of my like favorite games, two of my best games. It's like, it's literally like you're playing on, on Lake ice, you know, uh, out back when I grew up. Right. And you, I felt like I was flying. I was hitting everyone in sight. You know, your family's up, you know, a million miles away, but they're there, they're, they're watching you. So everything was pretty, uh, pretty dialed in and, and just really, really special environments. So I, I, I'm going to go up as a fan and we don't have to do any pre-shows or nothing like that to, to watch, but I'll be there. Uh, slugging them back up in the <laughs> up somewhere in the seats anyway, uh, just just to watch the and it's going to be a big game too, right? Uh, New Jersey's a little bit behind Philly, uh, you know. You can't really take, yeah, yeah, and they play the next night, so yeah, it'll be it'll be uh, you know a very important game, even though it's a, it's a special game, and yet you take all that in. It, it's it's about getting that two points and and bearing down too. So that's awesome. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, and then final one here, we'll get you on your way. Yeah. Um, quick, easy one. Is there a, a defining moment or a specific thing in your career that was the most fulfilling for you, whether it be at your time as a player or now doing the intermission and stuff? Like, what, what would that be? Uh, great question. I, you know, I, I, I really enjoyed my time everywhere. I think, you know, when I came in with Nashville, you know, my first game was in Tokyo, Japan. My first two games were in Tokyo, Japan. We did those uh, kind of game or two games, and you know I was playing against you know Mario and Yager and Jan Herdina and those guys back in in <laughs> where they had their heydays in, in the nineties, right? So that was that was unbelievable. Number one, uh, you know, first playoff game, uh, you know, in Nashville, getting traded to to Philadelphia, you know, the whole trade experience, kind of uh, you know making your life go that way. Uh, uh, I, I just enjoyed my time in Philly. Those were my best years, mo- most productive years. And, you know, the long hair and kind of, you know, I was, uh, I don't know if I can say I was an icon, but just like everyone, you know, like, hey, Scotty, you know, still get it today when I walk around, <laughs> walk around the rink, you know, you're, you're my favorite player, blah, blah, blah. So it's kind of cool that way. I, I really enjoyed my time in Columbus too. It was, uh, you know, I think it was time for, for, uh, a change, uh, you know, from Philly when I went there and uh, we didn't have the best years uh, except for my last year in Columbus. Uh, we lost first round. And then my last year in Nashville, it was, that was kind of go for, full circle. I knew it was going to be my last year. We won the president's trophy. We had an epic team, uh, you know, but, and then at the end of my career, I was 34, 35 and, you know, a little bit disappointed. I was, you know, played the whole year and then I didn't play in the playoffs uh, that, that much. So that was kind of a, a little disappointing you know, in that respect, uh, you know, you play the whole year and then kind of get shafted in the in the playoffs. But, uh, you know, it is what it is. And I was like, you know, I, I don't want to battle through a whole whole nother year to to get <laughs> to get piped during the best time of the year where I think, you know, a guy like me plays his best hockey. But, uh, you know, I got no beef. So I got, uh, you know, played some great games, uh, some good fights, some bad fights, some good hits, some bad hits. And, and uh, you know, all in all, it was it was pretty special. And, you know, one thing, you know, I. Uh, I, after my last game in Nashville, game seven, we lost in round two. A week later, my, my son was born. Wesley was born. So I didn't really have much time to think about, you know, oh, should I should I be training? You know, I was flipping diapers and, you know, all, <laughs> all that crap, literally, uh, uh, with that. And it was, you know, kind of, you know, not rolled off into the sunset, but it was, uh, uh, you know, just a, kind of an easy transition, right, to, to become a dad and, and uh you know do that stuff afterwards uh so yeah no 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 regrets no nothing played played a lot of games and uh had a lot of fun and and uh nothing nothing to be worried about so yeah all good awesome yeah, yeah no there he is uh scotty hartnell uh Artsy, <laughs> thanks so much uh we appreciate it um you know hopefully we, uh, we can uh, get you on soon and uh you know take care with uh with everything with the flyers and uh yeah. you know, stay safe with the snow out there as well, well- yeah, no, we'll, uh, we'll be safe for the snow. I got four by four in my truck, so we'll get this pod, pod go. back going when uh, uh, we get in the playoffs. How about that? Definitely. <laughs> Sounds good. For sure. All right, boys. See All you right, later. Thanks. We appreciate See it. You. Thank you. Yeah,
Yep. All right. Uh, so there it is. Scotty Hartnell. Uh, again, that was a lot of fun. Hope you uh, enjoyed that. Uh, Going to end wrap up the pod here with a couple of questions. This one comes from uh, Sean Fit three nine four six zero three five four on uh, Twitter. It's a really long username. Um, he said, uh, besides possibly Sean Walker, any other guys you could realistically see the Flyers parting with? It seems like Sealer is staying put. Obviously, we kind of talked about this a little bit. I, uh, I feel like we here? just went over that for the last mm-hmm. 20 some minutes. <laughs> yeah, yeah else here? <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I, I feel like it's just the basic guys that are on the uh, on the expiring deals, and then you know, yeah. unless they own tip it, <laughs> trade that yeah. guy. <laughs> I don't, even, I don't even think they should trade him. I think I think they need to consider it and make a decision. Will's Will's holding the sign on the corner of Patterson, just cardboard cutout. <laughs> trade tip it. Trade tip, tip it. Tip it out of here. Oh yeah. man, yeah, no, probably just the guys on expiring deals. Um, unless Danny really feels like shaking up, uh, and if he can get you know kind of like a Drysdale right, type return. Yeah, exactly. Came out of nowhere, shocked the world, right? So if he wants to uh, do that again and get a really good return for somebody. And, okay, <laughs> buddy's dying over here. <laughs> yeah, man. No, that's pretty much it. Uh, Sam, what do you think? I mean, I just I see no harm in fielding answers on everybody. Like, you're, you're if you're in a rebuild, you have to like take every phone call, even if you have no intention really of moving them. I don't see a harm in that. I mean, it, it, the only harm I can see is if like the the media hears that you're taking calls on a certain player, like like connect near or tip it, then they're gonna go crazy with it. But no, I don't. I don't see. I don't see the damage in it. Just see what people are giving you. Maybe you get one that stands out above the others, and you can't like say no to it. So we'll see. Yeah, and for, um, for anybody honestly, confused, what hold on for anybody confused, what just happened there? Chris just you know absolutely hacked up an yeah, entire just, lung right yeah, there. That was, <laughs> that was brutal. Half my lungs out. Um, too much talking in such a small amount of time. Uh, right. This one, this one comes from Flyers Goose, uh, the Goose Man on Twitter. Um, he said, rank these trades, uh, Gauthier to Anaheim, Provorov to Columbus, Giroux to Florida, Richards to LA and Carter to Columbus. It's quite the list. We'll start us out. It is, it is quite the list. Right. We'll start us out with this. Well, we're going from I'm best gonna, to worst. I'm going to start us out with the, I'm going to start us oh, out yeah. with the, the recent three, but I'm also going to throw in another one in there. I'm going to throw in the Tony D'Angelo trade buyout to, uh, Carolina. Cause I'm, okay. I'm a fan okay. of that one. Um, where I'm would you go... rank these though? One through five. What? Where would you rank these though? One through five. I see. I don't know. I don't know how qualified I am to 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 speak to the quality <laughs> of Richards and Carter trades, but That's I'd fine. go. Just, just give an answer. <laughs> yeah, I'd, I'd go. I'd go Provorov to Columbus at one. Okay. Um, Drew to Florida at two, and then. I, I don't know. I'll go. I'll go. Richards three, Gautier four, Carter five. Wow. Wow. Okay. The, the, uh, the, the, the Richards be fair and Carter to the kid. Be, could be absurd. I'm not. Yeah, as I mean, to be to be fair to the kid, he only got into hockey about three years ago. So you know, yeah. give him a little uh, bit of so slack. I, I respect the, this there. Yeah. The um. So for me, it, it's, it's kind of easy. Uh, the Carter to Columbus is number one. Yep. Easily. There um, you go. Drew to Florida is two. Uh, Richards to LA is three. Um, Prover of the Columbus is five, and then go shit Anaheim's four. Um, that's the pretty Carter, much exactly the what Carter I Carter to Columbus got you Couturier and got you Voracek for, mm, yeah. yeah, that's okay, okay, yeah. That's unbelievable. Um, and Nick Cousins, yeah, I, right? No, uh, stole right. ours. Wait, hold on, hold on. Look at yeah, Cousins yeah. was a different, different trade. We just drafted him. I'm surprised you're that yeah, well. No, this uh, one. Oh, well, this one, this says what? Because the, the Provorov one, it, it's just like an, a recent thing. The other ones are like 10 years of guys. I mean, like, yeah, but we traded the mid Provorov for a first round pick. Yeah, but a you second traded round pick Richards and Sean Walker and, 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 Simmons and got 10 years out of out of the yeah, both. You, of can't, you traded for like icons. In the Coots is now. still playing here and he's you know, number sure. one senior. Jake was, you know, a flyer for a decade and. And the, just, I mean the Richard the Richards to LA trade too. It also got I mean obviously uh, Shen and Simmons, but Shen was then traded for a, a first Frost round pick. So Bar- yeah, it was Frost and Farabee. Yeah, I guess so I was it's, more it's just ranking, a ripple effect. I guess I was more ranking. I guess thought on like quality of the trade itself. Like I feel like like what you got for Provorov, like the the positive value is is huge there. Yeah. Like obviously the yeah, other I ones mean, were bigger trades, but like. 
like the, the value we got for Provorov is asinine. It, I, it I, is, I mean, but it, it's also a lot of it is the fact that you know it was a, it was a three team trade, so you. That's true. The, the Carter one is ridiculous. I Wait, you said you said, best you said home made. Yeah, you said you I, said I Stolarz was in that one. I think so. Oh, because well, I'm looking at I'm just looking at hockey references. It says traded by the Flyers to Columbus for a first round pick, turned into Kateri, a third round pick, Nick Cousins and Jake Borchek. Oh, Cousins. Okay, my bad. I thought it was Stolarz. So. Who am I thinking was in the Stolarz deal? Stolarz was um because that was in that was in a package. Didn't they, no, they drafted Stolarz, didn't they? Yeah, but they got yeah. the picks from someone to draft him. I'm not sure. I'm not sure on that one. But what what I was gonna say about the pro rod deal, the whole reason that you know, like you said, the return was asinine. and I. The whole reason for that is because it was a three team trade and they took on salary. I, I the, mean that's fair. The, the cost like... the cost for Peterson and Walker to take on those contracts was essentially a second round pick. But now Walker's like a legit like second pair defenseman right. and exactly. great. And like and even the fact that we got positive. a first round for Provorov, also crazy. I mean, yeah, I mean, you got a Duke first and two seconds. Good. He's not doing good in Columbus either. Like, you advanced got a set, first and two no, seconds, and then, our, and then well, a defensive yeah. prospect. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Zach Wierenski over in Columbus would be tearing it up, but he's hurt every, oh, you know, my 20 bad. games. So the, the, we got stores in the Bob trade. Did we? So we traded Bob yeah. to Columbus for a second and third uh, and a fourth, which was um, – or sorry, a second and two fourths. It was uh, Stolarz, Taylor Lear, and then Justin Auger, who was traded so, to LA. Yeah, so one of the worst trades um, ever did. Yeah, and then the you were right, Sam. It was Jake, 2011 first, Coots out of that. And then Nick Cousins for Carter. And then Wayne Simmons, Braden Shannon, the 2012 second rounder to the Flyers for Richards and Rob Bordson. Uh, and then there is another good one in here. We traded Christopher Stieg to Florida uh, for a 12 or 13 second um or san jose's uh 2012 third which turned into ghost so that was a pretty good deal too um i think yeah. we trade i think we traded away the pick that turned into kucherov no we didn't i swear to god i was i was dicking around on hockey reference one day and i think i looked up andre mazaros and i was just looking at his transactions and it's that actually like, sounds right like that's Huh? That might no, be right, actually. Lucas Lessio. I, th- I think it's spelled incorrectly on the thing, but I'm pretty sure it was. A- yeah, it says July 1st, uh, Mazzara, traded by Tampa to the Flyers for a second-round draft pick in 2011, parentheses, Nikita Kucherov. But they spelled it Kucherov. I don't, think, Kucherov. They I don't think that's right. I, what- I think it is. I don't so- think it is because I'm on, I'm on the Flyers history site, and it's just Lucas I know. I, looked, I tried to, like, cross-reference it, and I couldn't find – Something else, but I just saw that pop up when I was just messing around. I'm like, there's yeah. no way. And that would make perfect sense too, because that would happen to us. Not that we would have taken him, but yeah. he went 56 overall to Phoenix. And that was the yeah. most I got traded back. As you? Yeah. So it was Mazzaro's got traded to Tampa for a second, which turned out to be Colton Sissons. That's what it was. Oh, and they yeah. fix it. Um I I was like, every time I've been like this guy false. I, 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 I never said the, it was only, true. Yeah. I just said that's what it says. No, the the only reason I believed you for a second was because I knew he got traded to Tampa. That's why I was like, "Huh, okay." Yeah, but yeah, no. I tell I mean, people. The only trade that, that I happened. remember with Tampa Bay was the Coburn deal. I remember the Pavel Coburn. Deal. Yeah, we traded Coburn, got Gudis, uh, a fifteen first, and a third for Coburn. And the, one of the best trades that Hextall ever made was swapping and trading up for a Konechny. Um. Traded our yeah, first, like Toronto, Tampa's right. first, and a second to Toronto, which they got Gabriel Carlson <laughs> and Jeremy Bracco. It was like a career AHL or for Jeremy TK. Bro. He was supposed to be good. Yeah, he was Jeremy supposed Bracco to be good. Was supposed to be good yeah. Whatever it is. Braden Chen ended up being Laterra, a first for Frost, and then a conditional first, which ended up being Faraby. Um, there's some, there, there are some good ones. There's some really bad ones, too. Um, the, yeah. the Chuck trade to get York was good. Victor Soderstrom right. for York when they traded up. Yeah, I know we're kind of going off topic here, but anyway. Uh, yeah. Um, I think that's it, fellas. That's all we got. Um, any uh, any last thoughts? Any last comments on Hartsey? I hope we can get him back. I, mean, I feel like yeah, there's a right. lot more. There's a lot more to go over. <laughs> yeah, Which, yeah we could have sure. gone on for over an hour. I mean, that was you yeah. know, it's always good to hear somebody's insight when they're, you know, kind of within the organization, but especially Hartnell. I know, you know, 
me, you, Sam, we kind of grew up watching the guy. So it's, uh, it's cool to kind of sit down and talk, just talk hockey, right? Loved everywhere he goes. Yep. Yeah. Hell yeah. All right, boys. Well, that was a lot of fun. Thanks everybody again uh, for all the support as always. Uh, obviously, check out Mayor Media and all the things that we do. Um, you guys got any uh, content coming out? Anything exciting you want to talk about? Uh, goalie article coming out soon. Uh, pumping Sam Erson. Here we go, Will. Hey, I'll, I'll, be pumping both shine, brother. I'll be pumping both goalies in this one. Nice. But I think Sam Erson's in need more of it than Hart. Yeah. Okay. Paul, you got anything? Yeah, just a lot of editing. I'm going to have uh, something coming on soon. I uh, haven't fully decided what it's going to be yet, but I'm, I'm definitely going to write a longer form piece soon. I had one not too long ago about uh, Tuamala and then Drysdale's first day at practice. So if you haven't if you haven't seen those, maybe check those out. I, I thought they came out pretty well. Um, Sam, you don't really do anything. You know, Sam, Sam maybe doesn't do anything. Hey, hey, hey. Like, maybe, maybe uh, I'll come up with a tweet. Yeah, <laughs> okay. you, you, you want to make your 15 tweet. followers. Um, <laughs> Let's go. Yeah, yeah everyone, everyone go drop, follow, drop a follow Sam Sam. Twitter. Yeah, he yeah. He drops, a, he drops a banger every twenty years. I'm selective. I'm selective. Yeah, every like two months, Sam is a good. I got people waiting with yeah. bated breath to see what I'm going to say next. Yeah. No. Yeah. yeah. Sam has spent spent too much time while Fargo Center. Didn't even think they actually they actually found uh, his Twitter account in one of those files. I live in that but, place. No. <laughs> nice. <laughs> all right, boys. Well, that was a lot of fun. Uh, thanks everybody again uh, for all the support as always. And we'll see you guys next episode. See you guys.